So here we go. Today, we are going to build an entire ad account from basically scratch, following every best practice I've been teaching for years, using some of the favorite tools of marketers these days. Everything I'm gonna show you is something you can do for free. This is all something that you can do in real time in less than 30 minutes. We're gonna use ChatGPT, we're gonna use Facebook ads, and we're gonna also validate a few things with organic social to make sure we have everything that we need. We're going to build a 322 ad account from scratch. We're gonna let the AI do all of the heavy lifting. And not only that, but we're gonna walk through how to set up the Facebook ad account and what targeting to use. I'm gonna show you all my prompts for ChatGPT. We're gonna explain why you use dynamic creatives and not doing so at this point is just negligent. So with that being said, let's get to it. All right, so we all love ChatGPT. There's a million fun ways of using it, but today I'm gonna walk you through step by step exactly how I use it. And I'm gonna show you every single prompt that I'm using along the way. I'm literally gonna share my screen for the entire thing. So first step here is let's find some copy. Now, there are a lot of fun ways to use ChatGPT to find the copy, but what we're gonna do here, let me start sharing my screen. All right, what we're gonna do here is first, I'm gonna leverage ChatGPT4 with some plugins. Now you don't have to do this, but a lot of us have it anyway, so why not show it with some of the more fun stuff, right? Now with the plugins, I've got Browse with Bing turned on, and the plugins that I'm gonna use, uh, there's Chat with Video, which we're not gonna worry about today, but I am gonna use Link Reader. Makes things easier. Also, if you notice on my screen over to the far left, I've got the Facebook Ads MBA program landing page up. This is my long form BSL style landing page. And yes, I made this entire landing page with ChatGPT. And hey, someday if you want me to teach you how to build all of these things, drop down in the comments and say, hey, Charlie, show us how you do all of this stuff. And yeah, sure, I'll show you. Now, what we have here is this really well written out, curated, the tone, the feel, the look, the vibe, everything that we need to appropriately get this across. And down at the bottom, a spot to hop on a calendar so that you can have a conversation and apply to get started right away. Now, what we want from our ads is a very congruent experience that meshes very well with the landing page that somebody's going to hit. So let's use the landing page to write all of our ads. Side note, we already know this landing page works really well. I've been running traffic to this for years now, or organically and with paid. So what we're doing is we're taking a proven, known, great user experience, and we're gonna amplify our business model with our Facebook ads. Because remember, that's the path to success. So that being said, let's get back to it. All right, so first thing that I'm going to ask ChatGPT to do, real simple here, is I'm gonna say, I need Facebook ad copy and headlines for ads to promote my webpage and Facebook Ads MBA program offer. Now, I find it to be very helpful to be specific, even though the page is only promoting one thing, exactly what we're asking the machine to do for us. So, I need Facebook ad copy and headlines for ads to promote my webpage and Facebook Ads MBA program offer. Can you please, might not be nice, right? Can you please scan my webpage, tell me the tone, and use that tone and voice to write me two primary texts and 10 Facebook ad headlines that will entice a user to click on the ad and sign up for the Facebook Ads MBA program. So now, now what we have is a very specific thing. We're setting the table, right? So we have very clear, what is the point of the task in this thread? I need ads to promote my webpage and my primary offer, which I've named. Second, can you please scan my webpage and tell me the tone and use that tone to write me two primary texts and 10 headlines that will entice the user to click. So we're putting in now a specific task as well as volume of the requirements. Now in a 322 ad, we're only gonna have three creatives, two headlines, and two primary texts. Now, if you notice, for those playing along the home game, I asked for 10 headlines. Don't worry, we're gonna get to that part in a little bit using another really fun tool to validate all the headlines to make sure we grab the ones with the best chance to be successful when it comes to the click-through rate of the word being used in our ads. Now, what I like to do is give it the order of operations that I'm gonna ask for. So, step one, ask me for my webpage URL. Step two, tell me the tone being used on my webpage. Step three, write me two Facebook ad primary texts. Step four, write me 10 Facebook ad headlines. Uh, take a break after each step and ask me if I am happy with the work. Done, fantastic. So now we've got a really simple prompt that is very directly going to identify the voice and timbre language, the tone of the landing page. So when somebody clicks on the ad, the landing page looks feels exactly like the ad. And then we're gonna get a whole bunch of sets of copy with it. And we're gonna get too many headlines, which is totally fine. Because remember, like I said before, we're gonna use another little fun tool that I've been using for years. And I'm getting this link to other videos, but will absolutely help your click the rate on your Facebook ad. And we'll get into that part in a little bit. But that being said, we got a beautiful prompt. We got everything we need. Let's go. And while this is happening, I'm gonna enjoy some delicious Topo Chico. So that being said, boom, let's see what happens. Could you please provide me with the URL of the webpage? Why, certainly I can. Now, it's a little obnoxious, but I find that being courteous to your AI just makes you feel a little bit better. So forgive me for being a little, a little bit of an anthropomorphizer of our machine overlord. All right, so here we go. We dropped in our URL. Let's hit enter. Using Link Reader, unverified, interesting. Let's see what happens. So now we're getting back some information. Now, I know you love these videos, but sadly, YouTube only has a like button. So if you do me a favor and smash it, it's down here on the bottom. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. If you're listening to on the podcast, hey, go ahead and get five stars. Give us a review. Tell all your friends. That's what we're here to do, right? Make things easy and then pass that along to everybody else because if it's successful for you, can you give it away? Imagine how much more good to happen. So we have a response here from the AI, and it basically says, the content of your webpage, the tone is professional, direct, and confident. It emphasizes personal responsibility, trust, and transparency. The language used is straightforward and honest with a focus on value and effectiveness. Quite literally, how I write every single page and the scripts for every single video. I think I'm being trustworthy and transparent, straightforward and honest with an emphasis on personal responsibility. This is great. Um, all that being said, side note, the web page was built off of every video where I described how the Facebook Ads MBA program works. So it scanned all of my YouTube to write the web page. We'll get to that in another video. If you want it, comment down below and I'll make that video next. Now we also see that it encourages potential customers to reflect on their goals and aspirations before making a purchase, suggesting a respect for the customer's autonomy and decision-making process. Yeah, yeah, I care about people. This isn't a direct response. Buy now, buy now, buy now. Just disrespectful 
used car salesman on my page. No, I'm a real person. You're a real person. If this is right for you, great. And if not, that's okay too. So it's picked up on all of these decisions that are being made, which is phenomenal. Now out of that, we say, now let's move on to step three, writing a primary text. Please hold on, generate them for you. And then we got two great primary texts. Now I'm noticing a small issue. Sometimes with Facebook ads, using you and your might cause some trouble. So let's address that problem and get another response. Can you please rewrite these two primary texts without using the words you or your or your? Thank you so much. Right. All right, absolutely. I love it. And it understands why. Because we're trying to avoid the direct addressing in the ad copy, which again, can get you banned on Facebook. So we're not going to run a Facebook ad to help people succeed at Facebook ads and violate their terms and services while we're doing it. That'd just be dumb. All right, and now we've got two really good pieces of text. Let's scan it real quick. Unlock your potential. This isn't just another course. Program perfectly aligns. No fluff, Doing strategies. Overbuilding revenue. Ready to commit. Wonderful. See what else? Ready to disrupt the norm. Take business to new heights. It's not for the faint-hearted. Put potential. Put in the work. The strategies to scale businesses. Let's check out the other one. Ready to disrupt the norm. Take business to new heights. MBA program. Not for the faint heart. Successfully scale businesses. One billion. Unlocking growth. Take a moment. Reflect on goals. They align. Oh, warm markets. These are great. I will 100% be happy putting these into the market. Now, what we need is some good headlines. So if you notice, chat is saying, please review these and let me know if they meet your requirements. Well, chat, uh, yes, these are great. Exclamation point. Now what's gonna happen is chat's gonna give it a bit of a think and we're gonna move on to the next step. Now if you notice, chat is writing out 10 headlines for Facebook ads. Now remember, we said we only need two, right? So it sounds like we have too many. Let's go validate these ideas and see which ones are gonna work best for us using another fun tool called vidIQ. So vidIQ is a really great tool. Now what vidIQ will do is it scans all of Google and YouTube to understand what keywords are gonna get somebody interested in the content. Now, before we go any further, yes, I understand YouTube isn't Facebook, but we're not asking for the whole ad. We're asking for the headline that's gonna give us the best opportunity for a high performance click-through rate. Now, I love using this tool because what is the title of the video but a headline underneath a piece of rich media? And that's basically the exact same thing as Facebook. Fun fact, when you talk to people in the way that they communicate with themselves and the machines and each other and you, you get a much better result. So instead of trying to write ad copy to force a direct response action, which might make the copywriter feel good about themselves, we're gonna reference real world language and index all of Google to see what would be good as a headline to get somebody to want to watch the video. In this case, we're using watching the video on YouTube as a proxy to want to know more, thus clicking on the ad to go to the webpage. When I have done this, I have noticed my performance on my ads increased by 20 to 30 percent within days and basically all my old control ads are pretty much all dead with the exception of maybe five or ten percent as soon as i started doing this about six months ago and it is an absolute game changer that being said let me show you the simple process to go ahead and find all the best copy again for free because nothing reviews here costs any money and your ads are gonna be so much better as a result so let's get to it all right now so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this headline number one we're gonna copy and paste into here now i tried to get prompts and get rid of the damn quotation marks and i haven't been able to figure it out so who cares so let's see this one we've got a medium search volume high competition this is telling us that basically not a lot of people are asking this question or looking for this content but there's a ton of people trying to sell it so maybe not a good idea let's keep going on here uh, uh, we'll take the commit to growth. We're going to go through every single one of these. This one, 2100 in the search volume. Competition is low. That's a 30.62. It's a 56. This is pretty good. All in all, I want something that's in the green. If it's not at least a 60, I'm not going to use it. So let's go through the rest of these and see if we can't find the best two options the chat GPT gave us. All right. So look at this, 69. This is going to be good. This is got to be one of our winners. Facebook ads MBA, your key to unprecedented growth. Well, that makes complete sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this right here. I'm just going to drop it into here just so I'm keeping notes somewhere. Let's keep going. <laughs> Another one, productize and scale, the power of the Facebook ads MBA. 2.91 competition, that's crazy low. 2,076 search volume, that's pretty good. And an overall score of 70, I'll take 70, yes please. So out of these 10, we already have two that are in our threshold. They're green, they're looking great. We have a couple more though. Let's see if anything can beat a 69 and 70. All right, so we've got two killers. To be honest with you, this, what you could do if you wanted was to say, hey, I like these two, write me 10 more of these or 100 and keep going. I'm gonna tell you this. Once you pass like 69, 70, 70, like you're not gonna get an 80, a 90. I've never seen anything above like a 75 or 76. I've just never seen it. And I've been doing this for months. Point here is we now have our two primary texts. We have our two headlines. And now what we need is our creative. So let me show you how we're gonna go through everything that we've already posted organically to our social media channels and pick the winners. So what we have here is my Instagram account. Now, I think an Instagram account is a great way to see what's gonna work well on the Facebook ads platform. Why? Because it's already performing well here. What's engaging? What's getting attention? What's getting views? Now, I have been launching a few videos inside the Reels section to promote the Facebook Ads MBA program. And we've got some stuff in here that's got some good view counts, but more importantly than just view, I also want to see the volume of engagement. So we can start to go in here and see like, okay, this one's got 26, this one's got 20, that was nine, so that one's not as good as these two. We keep coming down, but that's a 44. That's great. What I do, by the way, is I've already taken these pieces and uploaded them into the Facebook dashboard. So I can go through all of these. So this is a 44, which is great. Now, what I've done every time I upload a video is I will name the video, whatever the caption is. So how do I basically guarantee success? That video, 44. Right now, this one had 26, not as much, but like over a thousand views. What makes it better in traditional education? Interesting. Okay, and here's another one. How do I know it's legit? Okay, great question. So what we can do now is basically just track what are the file names of the pieces that we want to use. So I'm going to have over here a new note. So what are the ones that worked? Let's see, this one worked, right? How do I basically guarantee success? Awesome, let's get out of here. And let's see, this one was great. How do I know that the MBA program is legit? Good question. So we'll get rid of that. And this one was great. What makes the Facebook Ads MBA program better than traditional education? Fantastic. Not only that, somebody's already commented, where do I enroll in this program? And I've already replied with the URL. The point here is these are already working. And if you notice, they're all basically the same concept. It's a vertical video where it's a face direct to camera shot that's done in that like Hermosi style caption app tool. And so they all fit the same format. They're all basically around the same concept and they're all more or less the same style. So this is an amazing route for a concept. 
concept inside of the 322 method. And look at that, all of these things, these concepts for why these videos exist, and all these captions totally align with the text that the AI has already built for us. So we really only have one more step to go, and that's to go ahead and make our ads. So let's see here, we're gonna get rid of vidIQ because we don't need it right now, and let's just minimize that and bring up our ads manager. Fantastic. So what we're gonna do right away is we're gonna make a new campaign. We're gonna say in this case that it's a sales campaign. Now we are ultimately trying to get people to sign up for a sales call, but I'm not trying to get leads for a CRM list, and this isn't a traffic campaign, so sales will absolutely work. We're just gonna tweak what the conversion is based off of my page and a little bit of custom code I put in there because I wanna show you also how custom conversion ends work. Now obviously when we come in here, first things first, we're gonna turn on CBO, or in this case it's called Advantage Campaign Budget. Let's throw in 100. And what are we gonna call this campaign? We're gonna call this, let's go with Facebook Ads MBA Program Calendar Filler. Why not? The purpose of this campaign is to fill the calendar for the Facebook Ads MBA program. All right, cool. We're using the auction, we're not using catalog, we don't need to worry about any of this stuff, we're not doing an A-B test. So let's go ahead and hit next. Now in here, we're having an ad set. Now the ad set should be named in a way that allows you to understand what the content is right away. So our concept here is Instagram Reels, Mosey style, batch one. And let's also drop just a few other pieces in here. This is overcoming objections. Fantastic, because that's what the scripts are all about. And we're gonna come on down. Yes, we're gonna use website. Yes, we're gonna maximize the number of conversions. Now our conversion event, we're actually gonna choose MBA application. Now the reason we're doing that is because we have placed a specific bit of code on the page. And let me show you what that code looks like. So let's take a moment and look at the code written on the page so that we can tag for a custom event and ultimately leverage both advanced matching and our custom conversion events so that we even get to see it inside of our dashboard. Now what we have here is just the typical page view code. And you can see page view, and here it says page view. Alright, now the next thing that we've done is we've installed the typical lead event. And you can see it here, lead, and down here it says lead. Great, here is a custom. We have the metapixel code, there we go. MBA application, and down here, MBA application. When you install it and the page goes live. What's going to happen is you're going to see that as an event that can possibly fire. And when you hit publish, you're going to see this column appear as an option inside of your dashboard. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we want conversion. And we want that conversion to be somebody firing the MBA application. We're also tracking that as a lead event. So we're able to tap into some of the advanced matching for lead stuff so broad targeting still work for us. And we're running a conversion campaign. So we're trying to get people that are likely to spend money. And we're also firing the page view because why not? All right. So that means here we have the MBA application event. Fantastic. So step two, we are going to hit dynamic creative at ad set level. Because when we do dynamic creative at the ad set level, it taps into more information. This is a DCT dynamic creative test. When you do DCO, which is dynamic creative at the ad level, you're actually accessing far fewer sets of data. Do it at the ad set level. There's there's no good reason not to. This is a controlled creative test. It's not even Facebook ads. And honestly, I haven't built a single account in the last five years that doesn't do this. I've tried it every now and again. I just throw money out there to see if other things work. But it's been the better part of a decade since anything outside of this was able to compete even mildly with the results you get from doing it this way. Plus, this is a lot easier. So, what else do we have? We're down in the audiences section. Now, if you've been paying attention, uh, you know I go broad. And you know what? We're not gonna change anything else here. We're going United States, because that's where our market is for this particular offer, because it's in the American dollar. And I don't need to train the system to work on the nuances of different languages. And honestly, I wrote this in American. I didn't write this in Canadian or in British version of English. And I know that that kind of sounds dumb, but believe me, there are nuances to language and socioeconomic terminology. There are impacts on how you write your words when it's written for somebody in a different culture, even if they speak the same language. Now, that being said, 1865, all genders, what detailed targeting we use? Absolutely none. Ads do the targeting. Now this is sadly still up for debate, which is wild because it's been the truth for over half a decade now. But when you use something like a lookalike, let's say it's a 1% lookalike, that's actually a 99% exclusion of all of the people that might want to see your content based off of what? Facebook's pixel data? Is that all inclusive? Do you trust it? Maybe you're th saying, I'm gonna throw in all my Clavio people. The folks that didn't buy from Facebook ads, do you really wanna target them with Facebook ads even though their customer journey is completely different? What if they didn't even buy the same thing? Or you can say, well, no, 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 we know it's the same thing. We've got 800 people that bought it. Clearly that's enough to narrow down an audience of, what is this, 273 million down to 2 million based off of a data set that's less than 0.1% of that? No, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. And we're not gonna pay extra to use that data to then exclude the vast majority of people. We're also not gonna use interest groups because remember, interest groups as a technology were effectively deprecated by the engineering team at Facebook like over five years ago. And yes, if Facebook took it away, there'd be this massive outcry. An interest group doesn't mean you have buying intent. It doesn't mean you have positive sentiment. So what we want is an unabated access and a meritocratical game theory economy that is Facebook where attention is the currency. So we're not gonna exclude anybody. And why not maybe previous buyers? Well, if previous buyers see the ad and don't wanna buy or engage with the ad, 
How often do you think they're gonna see it? Facebook's business objective is to give people an experience they want to see. If they're trying to force ads onto people that they're not interested in, that would be bad for Facebook's business model. Again, don't worry about it. And you might say, well, I've got 2,000 people that have bought. I don't wanna waste money targeting them. Okay, what's your budget? Let's say it's 1,000 a day and your CPMs are 20 bucks. At max, if you reach every single one of those customers, let's say twice a day, that's 80 bucks out of the 1,000. And do you really think they're gonna hit every one of those customers twice a day, every single day? No, so don't worry about it. Remember, most of the people that teach you how to do things don't know how Facebook works. And I legitimately think people haven't sat down and actually broken down what am I telling the machine to do? And does this make any sense? Because I'm breaking this down as though I was trying to teach it to a five-year-old and I don't think they're gonna have any argument against it. That being said, all right, so let's keep going on. Uh, we're gonna use Advantage Plus placements. Why? Because we're not paying extra to exclude people. No, we're letting the machine do all the hard work for us. So let's hit next. Now we're down to the ad level. The ad name and the ad set name should be identical. That way when you pull reporting at the ad set level or at the ad level, you're able to know one-to-one -one relationships of where things are. There's no benefit to not naming the ad the same thing as the ad set when running a DCT. There's literally no good reason not to do that. So let's hit ad preview because why not take a look at what we're doing. Now we're coming from Disruptor School. That looks great. We're gonna come from the Disruptor School page, of course. So let's start to upload these videos. Now we have our list, which I brought over to the right-hand side of the screen. Now let's copy this name of the video, which remember, just ties to the caption because why make it more complicated? And we're gonna hit search, and hey, look at that. The exact video that already worked really, really well on organic social, we got it. Let's grab the other two. This one, select videos, paste. Why do I know, look at that, another one. And let's grab one more. Select video, paste, bang, continue. Fantastic. Now, we can get rid of this, minimize. Now, next thing we need is our primary text, right? So let's go ahead and grab it from our chat GPT. Boom, add the primary text. Love it. Let's make sure to not copy over the quotation marks if you happen to have them. Uh, let's add a text option and do one more. Boom, boom, love it. We're only gonna use two primary texts. Now, alone, right here,